Hey, how's it going, fight fans? Welcome to Mindful Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name's Rohan, and this is my platform where I do fight sports related content. So if you're new here, why don't you help me grow my platform? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, and maybe hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. It's not going to cost you no money, it's going to mean all the difference in the world to me. I'm trying to hit 2k by the end of the year, and I'm creeping up to, you know, 1800, but I need your help to get me there. So, so guys, please do subscribe. If you've got friends and family that are into mixed martial arts or boxing or anything combat sports related, send them across my channel help me to get those numbers up and um, yeah thank you anyways with that said in this video i'm going to be taking a look at hamza shamayev now this is not a video i had intended to make but i spend a lot of time on the forums and the boards and you know just the discussions of mixed martial arts like mma fighting youtube comment section etc etc and what i've been seeing is a consensus feeling that hamza shamayev is a hype job you know he hasn't beaten no one good and he's been pushed way too fast down our throats and that he's going to get exposed by Leon Edwards. Now, I am of the opinion that he's being rushed along too fast. I believe that he should have been given an opportunity to build up his um, resume. And I made a case for it in my video with Kamza Shamaya versus Michelle Pereira fight breakdown. And I was hoping that that would be the next fight that gets made because I felt like that would be a perfect fight for them. Especially with the experience level, the age, everything else. That was the fight and I've done a breakdown of that. If you want to check it out, check it out. I thought it would be fun because it was you know, a tiny bit of tension there just based on um, Michelle Perreault's last fight. And I thought that's the correct level of talent. That's not what's happened now. Is he going to get smashed by Leon Edwards? I don't think though. I've done a breakdown of that fight as well. So check that one out. But let's take a closer look at Hamza. So Hamza is 26 years old. Still a very young man reaching his physical prime. They say a man reaches his physical prime, you know, late 20s, early 30s. So, so he's still there. He's a, a Swedish Chechen young man. Is standing at six foot two which means he's perfect really to fight both at welterweight and middleweight which is in why it makes sense that he does do that so he's got a great frame for it but that's his size and his age yeah, he's young he's he's got a good height what are some of his martial artist credentials well he's got a brazilian jiu-jitsu blue belt so whilst he's not a complete novice at brazilian jiu-jitsu he's not a highly ranked brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter either but i think what helps him in his brazilian jiu-jitsu game particularly mixed martial arts is his physical strength he tends to carry a lot of physical strength that's obvious and he also has great wrestling now this is a guy who won the swedish national open in um, in, in wrestling and ha didn't have a single point scored against him he dominated that now obviously we're not talking the caliber of all american wrestler all american you know coll collegiate wrestlers but still you respect these guys as talented athletes and competitors they didn't score a single point on comes that comes that dominated them after that, of course, he's gone on to have an amateur career. So he debuted as an amateur of mixed martial arts in 2017. In 2017 and 2018, late 2017 and 18, um, early 2018, he competed as an amateur where he went 3 0. He scored two submissions and one knockout, finished everyone he faced. So he had built up some experience before he went professional. And now, as a professional, we know that he stands at nine wins, zero losses, with six knockouts and three submissions. He's a very experienced fighter at this point in the sense that he's built up the repertoire he's been around the game now before we start looking at his fighting game in particular what do i mean by he's very experienced look at his team he trains with some of the best fighters in the world he fights with alexander gustafson a three-time world title challenger who's fought the likes of john jones daniel cormier anthony rumble johnson glover Teixeira. he fought in two weight classes been in the ufc since he was what 22 23 years old took out vladimir matyushenko back in the days that's how long Gustafson's been around this is a very very experienced and talented fighter who's got a hell of a lot to say about you know just how good he is and I think that's something that we should remember about um you know comes out Shamaya's training partners he trains under Reza Maddo uh, Maggedi who had a career in UFC at lightweight and made, probably well suited to be a coach he was a madman back in the days I used to love his stare downs but probably well suited to be a coach of course he trains with Gorab who's one of his best friends that's a really high level wealth of talent that he's training with day in, day out, fighting with them, competing with them, and has been doing so for years at only 26 years old. If he can take what Gus has learned, Ilay Latifi has learned, and take that and put that into his own game and enhance his own game, learn from the experience, don't make the mistakes they've made, don't get beaten up in training, train smart, use your talent. He is going to grow at an exceptional rate, which is what we've seen. But now that we've talked about that, let's have a look at his record. Well, he, we know he's 3-0 in the UFC, but against who? John Phillips. So let's talk about John Phillips. 
John Phillips, when comes up fought him, comes up with only 6 0. So I'm from the world of boxing where a 6 0 fighter is fighting a guy who's five wins and 272 losses and maybe eight draws or some shit like that. But that's not what comes out there. It comes out jumped into the UFC and he fought John Phillips. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sell John Phillips as a world beater, but what he is is an established, experienced veteran who had UFC caliber experience and has won Bama titles and was fighting a long time before comes out. So I was watching John Phillips when I was like 17 years old and he was fighting Tom Kong Watson in the main event of Bama. Back when comes out weren't even a thing. Like he was probably, comes out was probably only 18 years old then, maybe 17, young. He was a young man then. So you got to imagine the wealth of experience that John Phillips has has over him. Now he's obviously got a massive hole in the game. Now this is what's impressive. Comes out a young fighter, only 6-0. A lot of times young fighters will walk in and want to prove a point. So they'll go and fight the fighter where he's strongest. Just to kind of brush that chip on the shoulder, try and pad it out. That's not what comes out there. He took the path of least resistance and took him down, dominated him and only got hit twice whilst um, John Phillips was on the ground or some shit. So that was a great performance by comes out. Then he fights Rhys McKee. Now you guys don't know who Rhys McKee is. I respect that. He made his UFC debut. He was some scrawny... Irish kid, who is he? Well, let me tell you something about Reese McKee. He's fought in Cage Warriors in two weight classes, won world titles in Cage Warriors, a very respected promotion. And he's trained with some fighters in the UK shores that I know that always turn around and tell me how talented Reese McKee is. Reese McKee is a very talented, credible talent. I think he's actually going to have a very respectable, maybe he's not going to be a world champion, but he's going to have a very respectable career in the UFC. He's going to do a lot, in my opinion. He's going to go out there. He's going to win fights, he's going to put on fights, he's going to test people, he's going to make a name for himself and this shouldn't be, uh, you know, the bar by which he's measured. Reese McKee's a good win. Then he fought Gerald Mershaw. Gerald Mershaw was 31 and 13 when he went into the fight with Kamzat Shamaya, was 6 and 6 in the UFC, had 12 fights. Kamzat had had just two fights in the course of two months, so he hadn't really fought no one. And Gerald Mershaw had been around in the UFC for a long time, fighting with some good fighters. Um, Gerald, uh, Gerald Mershaw was even 25 and 8 before he even signed with the UFC. So, a very, very experienced fighter nonetheless. So, you've got to come to really start to respect the talent, even if you don't think they're the best in the world. But are those his best wins? No, 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 they're, they're not. Comes at Shamayev's best win, and you can go on uh, YouTube and watch this. Comes against Ikram Ali Askarov. Ikram Ali Askarov is a very, very talented fighter. At the time, Comes at was 4 0. Ikram was 8-0 uh, in the game, so they were both undefeated young talents and they were matched up early in the game. Now, who is Ikram? Is he a nobody regional fighter? Hell no, he's not a nobody regional fighter who had just beaten other nobody regional fighters that and built up an undefeated record. No, let, let me tell you something about Ikram. Ikram is still only 26 years old. Ikram is 10-1 and now, has gone 2-0 since losing to, um, you know, Kamzat uh, Shamaya. He won the 200, uh, 2017 World Cup, um, World Championships in um, Sambo. Not sorry, he won the 2016 World Championships in Sambo. He's won the Sambo World Cup twice and he won the 2017 European Championships in Sambo. Sambo is basically mixed martial arts with a gi, put it in layman's terms. Disrespect the sport completely. But it's where um, Khabib made his name before he ever joined the UFC or MMA as well. It was in Sambo. Sambo was a very, very decorated and respected form of combat and this is a multiple time world champion who was undefeated and is undefeated since young in his prime that comes out knocked out flat line in the middle of the cage if you ain't seen that fight watch that fight it's actually a great fight Ikram did give comes out something to think about getting some chili sauces I like to say and um yeah so comes out has got that win and that's probably the biggest win in his career to date so that's going to be the biggest test he's had going into the Leon Edwards fight which is going to be no doubt the biggest test of his career after the fight after the fact so that's my thoughts on it is comes out Shamaya have a complete hype job no is his record padded no has he fought talented fighters yes he has fought talented fighters but is he ready for Leon Edwards? Not necessarily, but we're going to find out. Should he be fighting Leon Edwards? No. He should be fighting much lower down the total for, like I said, Michelle Pereira would have been a good fight. Is this a fight we should be excited for? Absolutely. We should definitely be excited for this fight. It's a great fight. Tons on the line here. It means a lot in the division. And I, for one, cannot wait. Anyways, guys, I thought I'd give you guys a closer look. Thumbs up. Should I have you guys could have done some research yourself? I'm happy to do it for you. Talk to you guys about it. And, um, you know start the discussion engagement in the channel in the comment section so guys do check out 
Um, his bike with Ikram Ali Askarov. Check out Ikram Ali Askarov while you're at it. Comment below if you're new here. Like, subscribe, share all that jazz. There may be a preview at the end of this video. Stick around, watch that. If you ain't watched the full video, then check out the full video on my channel. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'm Rohan, and as always, this is Mind for Combat. Anthony Joshua is at number two now. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, why ain't he at number one? Well, I've got a reason for that, and we'll go into number one. But Anthony Joshua is a dangerous, dangerous man. He's still a very young man at heavyweight. He's only 30 years old. He stands at six foot six, which doesn't make him make him too much smaller than the six foot nine Tyson Fury. And he has an 82 inch reach as opposed to Tyson Fury's 85 inch reach. The difference between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder is about 30 pounds of solid muscle. In that Anthony Joshua is a true heavyweight. He's a built heavyweight. Whereas Deontay Wilder, if push came to in my opinion he could actually make cruiserweight that can't be said for Anthony Joshua who is 23 and 1 with 21 KOs at heavyweight former Olympic gold medalist and two-time world champion unified world champion he has four championship belts to his name now the thing with Anthony Joshua is he's very he's he stylistically he's a good fight for Tyson Fury he is yes he is absolutely he is because you know he kind of boxes in a linear way the way he fought against Andy Ruiz I don't think would work against Tyson Fury but that notwithstanding Anthony Joshua is technically a supreme boxer I'm not saying he's a better boxer than Tyson Fury he's just got a great technical skill set that Deontay Wilder doesn't have he's a bigger boxer than Deontay Wilder he's stronger I would venture that he's probably stronger than Tyson Fury and if he was to be able to get in there he could definitely hold off Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury couldn't lean on him like he did against Deontay Wilder and tire him out and Anthony Joshua carries big power as well. Not Deontay Wilder power but enough power to knock out Tyson Fury and that's something that we should know and take good consideration of. Anthony Joshua is very technical, he's got great conditioning, he's a true heavyweight and he's got big big power. So yes I might pick Tyson Fury against him being that Tyson Fury I believe is the smoother boxer with more fluidity in his movement and he's got sharper snappier jabs and boxing. I would pick Tyson Fury but that doesn't take away from Anthony Joshua's abilities and his abilities to win the fight if they was to fight I wouldn't completely write off Anthony Joshua Anthony Joshua is most certainly a dangerous threat and a credible talent to take the belt away from Tyson Fury and end his championship reign now with that said you can't deny that Anthony Joshua is a dangerous man still improving and he he comes in very comfortably as my second most dangerous threat to Tyson Fury